people take this exit because it's to Canberra. Like, a lot of people take Sydney to Canberra, not as many people take Sydney to Melbourne, so... Good day and welcome back to another video <laughs> of Oh my god, I just fell on the floor! <laughs> Imagine waking up and this is your bedroom. Wow. And for $110 a week, that is really, really not bad. Housing prices here are just wonderful. All right, morning guys. Uh, it's currently 8 a.m. morning and um, in about an hour or so, I'm gonna join my first ever cubing competition and um, it's gonna be really great if nothing unexpected happened. I'm gonna actually start heading off now because you know I need to get there by like, like 8.40, 8.45-ish and like I still have to register and everything, you know, put my name down since my first competition and uh, yeah. I have freaking air conditioning here, but <laughs> um, I don't know why you'd use that air conditioning. It's uh, It's pretty cold here. So, um, no, it's useless. Just before this competition, right, I'm gonna set, I have some goals that I have to set. I'm gonna be doing nine events today. It's gonna be pretty much all of the events that they even offer in the competition, except for the blind events. So two by two, three by three, four by four, five by five, pyramid cube, mega mix, square one, and one hand. And um, I actually only learned how to solve the square one and the mega mix like a couple of weeks ago. So um, <laughs> I, I don't even know. Now the goals I'm gonna set for myself, which you know are pretty high standard, are a sub 15 average for three by three, a sub seven average for two by two, a sub 110 average for four by four, and a sub 230 average for five by five. One hand, I want to get a sub 40. For pyramids and skew, I, I don't really care about these. Maybe a sub like, sub 15 would be fine. Um, no, I don't really care about these events. For square one, since I'm like pretty new to it, I kind of just want to get like an average. And for Mega Minx, I know I'm not going to get an average. I just kind of want to get both of my solves done. So that means for square one, at least one of my first two solves need to be sub 45. And for Mega Minx, both of my solves has to be sub five minutes. Those are just my goals. They're pretty high standards. So I'm not going to be like that harsh on myself. For three by three, if I just get like a tw sub 20 average, I'm happy. Two by two, a sub 10 average. Four by four, like a sub one. 30 and 5 by 5 like I, I just want to get an average so that means at, at least one of my first two solves need to be sub 230 pyramids and skew at least if I just get a solve done I could, I'm happy one hand I pretty much just want to get an average uh for square one I just kind of want to get like both of my solves done so both of them will be like sub two minutes and for mega mix I just want to get one solve done so one solve that's sub five I'm not sure if I'm even gonna be able to reach those goals, which just makes me happy. And you know, these like full on goals that I set my, for myself, that's gonna be pretty hard to get. So um, I'm gonna start heading off now and uh, we'll see how so we go. I would like to mention that I haven't even practiced for the last three days. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a bit rough. All right, we're now on the way to you know the competition, which is at Sorel Memorial Hall. And um, we're on the Tasman Bridge again. I mean, I'm not sure what's the big deal with this thing. I'm not sure why they have to like make it so long in the middle of like a city that's not even that populous, but uh, it's a really nice bridge. I mean, it's not really suitable for the population of the city, but you know, it's really nice to drive on this kind of thing or whatever, so um, yeah. We're well, like passing through a dam. Like, if you can see, the right, the water on the right is actually higher than the water on the left, but it's hard to see on camera, but um, if city skylines has taught me anything, this should generate like around 30, 40 megawatts of electricity. So, um, yeah. Okay, so this is the inevitable part where I start voiceovering everything since I did not talk much at all during the competition, much thanks to my social awkwardness. So, after about a half an hour of driving, we've arrived at Sorel Memorial Hall, and uh, my first impression was that, other than I get to see Felix, uh, which I'm seeing him right now, that there is quite a lot of kids there which I didn't really fit in a lot of reason why I didn't feel much I'm kind of in a way I consider senior citizen at the age of 17 so uh, some more shots of someone way faster than me but also younger than me making an announcement to everyone one day that'll be me uh, hopefully uh, a shot of the tutorial for the new competitors which I was too shy to attend to and then the competition started 
2x2 was up first, which was an event I didn't really care too much about. And uh, what you're about to see here is um, the first solve I've ever done in a competition. 6.26. So the first solve wasn't that bad. Once again, my goal was sub-7, so that was actually a pretty good time for me. But um, yeah, the second solve, let's just say... As you can see, I've already had some problems in inspect inspection already. I couldn't recognize the OLL. I had a little bit of trouble doing the PBL. I'm still doing it. And I did the wrong PBL. And it was already 10 seconds at the time. I tried to fix it. And then when I tried to fix it, it was wrong. Oh, uh, DNF. 12.97. It's not solved. Yeah, but it's plus two then, yeah? No, it's, it's DNF. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah? I don't know. It's a DNF. Is that a DNF? Yeah, so it's not solved? Oh, yeah, it's DNF. Okay. The last three solves of the average was five were all pretty bang average solves, even by my standards. So um, nothing really to see here. My final average was 9.20 for 2x2 two two first round. It's pretty bad even by my standards, but uh, it was sub 10, so it's pretty happy about that. So 3x3 three three was up next, and uh, just like probably 95% of other competitors, 3x3 three three was the event that I cared the most about. So I was pretty nervous at that time. So the first solve I did was not good at all. Uh, in about a few seconds, um, I had a little bit of trouble doing my last two slots, as you can see here. And by the time I finished F2O, it was already at 16 seconds. So, um, final time, 20.37. Horrendous first 3 by 3 solve. But um, it's my first solve, so it doesn't really matter. No one's that good on the first solve anyway. So after what happened on the first solve, the second solve was up next and uh, you know, I was pretty scared of what happened on my second one because the first one went so horribly. 20.37 uh, wasn't even faster than my happy score, so uh, this solve went a lot better. Uh, it wasn't the best, um, my F2L did have some like small anomalies but with a final time of 17.55, it wasn't actually that bad. Now the next solve was the best 3x3 solve I had in the whole competition. It wasn't particularly lucky or anything, but it definitely was a good time by my standards at least. I'll try and talk less and let you appreciate this beauty of a solve. Of course, unless you're faster than me, in which case, good for you. Thirteen point two nine. I've only gone one time faster than this on camera prior to this, so um, this is a great solve. The next two solves were eighteen point five two and fifteen point eight three, respectively, which gave me an average of five of seventeen point three zero for my first round of three by three. This means that I was placed 17th in the competition in the first round, enough for me to make it to the next round comfortably, especially since 49th place also made it. 1 minute and 12 second average. Oh, keep practicing my dude. Up next was 3x3 three three one handed, and for this round, I needed to get one solve under 45 seconds in my first two solves in order to have a chance of doing the next three. So, my first solve was 41.28, which makes it so that I was instantly able to get 5 solves done, unless I DNF 2 of my solves. My next solve was a 27 second solve, which was the fastest time I've ever gotten, period. It even had a PLL skip, but I didn't freaking film it, which means it doesn't even get to get featured in this video. Shame. The next solve, I struggled a little bit with it, but it was decent. 43.14 and the one after I had many lockups during F2L. I got a horrible OLL case and a PLL case I didn't even know how to do one handed. So yeah, 53.92. But surely this has to be my worst time, right? So it doesn't matter. It won't count. Sub 40 is still possible. But uh, unfortunately next solve, I twisted a corner and I was reluctant to twist it back during the one handed solve and uh, DNF. They're going to corner twist here. There's a to corner twist. It's a DNF, it's a DNF. Yeah, yeah. So were you saying that was twisted? Yeah, that was unsolvable. Is this a DNF? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because look, this can't be solved, right? 
Yeah, but you can twist it back in a solve. You, it, no, but I could only do use one hand, so I, I can't do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Like, your wrist on the tape when you try it, that's bad. But... Nah, but the solve's already done. Yes. Oh, wait. I'm lucky. <laughs> And the worst part about it was, this wasn't even my main cube. I actually switched it out. If you haven't already realized, it looks a bit different from my other four souls. But um, I switched it out for this since my GAN 356XS wasn't really performing well. But um, this one performed even worse. When I said it won't get worse, it has gotten worse. So much worse that I didn't even make it to the second round. <sighs> So after the dreaded one-handed round, it was then lunchtime, so here's my practice table for the competition, by the way. With the two things vivaciously enhancing the pyramid skills. So after lunch and also after multi-blind, which I didn't do, because how on earth do you expect me to solve two plus cubes blindfolded when I can't do one? It was time for pyramids, the only event that I could care less about than 2x2 two two, other than scoob and uh, the first solve was already a DNF since I didn't do the two flip algorithm properly. Oh, no, it's a DNF. It's a DNF. The next solve was a freaking 26.09. If I got that time for 3x3, three three, I would literally be raging. And Pyramids is supposed to be an easier event than 3x3, three three, so... Yep. Yeah, things weren't looking too good. And then followed by a 24.43. See why I don't like Pyramix now? The next solve wasn't too bad, but who am I kidding? The average is already ruined now. I probably won't even get to the next round. And then the final solve, 11.65. Consistency 100 right there, ladies and gentlemen. And somehow I made it to the next round. I don't know how, but um... <laughs> then it was scoop time. The other dodgy event that I didn't care much about. So first solve was pretty bad. Second solve was... Okay, but still pretty bad. Third solve also pretty okay, but half of the frame is blocked by this 3x3. Fourth solve was actually pretty good, but look at this. I touched the cube. Like, it was already considered solve when I didn't touch it. So, because of that, if anyone noticed, it was going to be a DNF. And luckily, or should I say unluckily for me, this little judge noticed it. So... I got reported to the delegate, he did a whole VAR thingy on it where he checked the video footage to see if everything was okay and... Oh, yeah, who am I kidding? Uh, it wasn't. I know you do it at home, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, this whole incident was caught on Felix's GoPro. Oh, yeah. that's a damn You have to wait for him to... It, it's just something you do like Yeah. Because I know you do it at home, right? Like yeah. that. That video almost has 100,000 views now. And then my next solve was a 6.6, .6, which is really good. But the reason why you're not seeing it now is because just like the 27 second one handed solve, I didn't film it. So yeah, I have a pretty tough relationship with Scoob. I ended up getting a 17.55 average for Scoob first round. Once again, somehow able to get to the next round. This competition really is weird. But enough about this dodgy event, the next event I did was 4x4 and this is my second solve you're seeing right now because I didn't film my first one. But unlike the other two solves I didn't film, it was a horrendous time so after some pretty frivolous turning because you gotta do that a lot in anything that's bigger than a 3x3, I got a minute and 15 second solve which is okay, then I got a 1 minute and 12 second solve which I didn't even get the film proof that I did because the kid just straight up yeeted the timer. I did get a shot of the score paper though, so maybe that's consolation. And then that was followed by 111 and finally a 108. I was three seconds off my goal of sub 110, but a 113 average was able to comfortably get me over the top 75% to get me into my second round. So maybe I'll get better luck there. And now the final event of the day, or it would have been the second last if I didn't yeet the corner in my one hand soul, was five by five. And first off, already allowed me to do five souls, which I'm pretty happy about. Then I got a 216, which is a really good time for me. Followed by a 231 and then a 224, which I didn't even get to film the whole thing since my GoPro overheated mid solve. And also a 238, which same thing happened. God damn it, GoPro. So my final average was 227, which was below my goal of 230. So I'm super happy about that, considering this was the only goal I hit for the whole day. I was also ranked 13, so that's not so bad. 
So yeah, after 5x5, five five, it was time to head out. We're now back on another dam again, leaving Sorel, going to get some dinner. And uh, yeah. Right, here we are, we're at um, Robot CBD now. And, um, <laughs> just the random force passing by, don't, don't, don't worry. Yeah, we're about to get dinner right now. Brisbane BMW. Huh? But it has a test for the BMW. Alright, we're about to enter a restaurant called The Glass House. Here's the menu. Uh, This is our entree dish, just basically just sashimi and um, apparently this is blue food. I'm gonna consume five dollars with one mouth. Watch this. Not that much different from eating just a five dollar bill. Alright guys, we're back at the hotel. We've actually been back for about like three hours now, but um, here I am editing a video on uh, Premiere now because, you know, I have to get it done before I get back. So um, yeah, I'm just doing that right now. And uh, yeah, basically second day in Tasmania, you know, just do some random crap. And since, you know, I have this due, I need to finish it. Okay, it's the second day now. I'm sorry I didn't vlog that much yesterday. Uh, I think I was really tired and you know, I had a video to be done. So um, I just, I wasn't bothered. But here it is in a hotel with my PC just set up over here with my monitor like just lying on there because I didn't want to put a stand on it because it was too much trouble. And uh, yeah, we're gonna head to day two of the turnaround Tassie competition now. And uh, I only fulfilled my goal for five by five yesterday, I think. Uh, I let's see if we can get um more goals today done. Well, I've already failed my four by four since I don't think I made it to the finals. Well, actually, I think I did. I don't even know. But Mega Minx and Square One. Let's see how they go. And uh, one handed. Oh my god, the worst thing happened to. I didn't even tell you, did I? Guys, yesterday for one handed, I was the only one who got an average time but didn't make the freaking second round. Uh, but I missed out on one spot but but that's not it apparently number 13 didn't even come so i technically could have taken his spot considering you know if he didn't come then you know i could just take his spot and i could complete compete for him and you know probably do pretty well as well but um it is what it is and um two more things also happened like and one of the rounds where i was doing like the one hand solve i got a 27.7 time i didn't film it it was, it was one of my best times. Like, I don't think it was the best time I ever got, even when, when like practicing at home. So that was, that was one of the best, you know, times I ever gone, but I didn't film it. And it was, it happened in a competition as well, but I didn't film it. I filmed all the other solves, but I didn't film that one. And you know, I also got like a 6.6 .6 scoop solve. I didn't film it. <laughs> I, I don't know but I, I but I also think I did break my PB for the 5x5 five five solve I don't remember what it was but um congratulations I I actually did film that solve so you know I I'm pretty happy with that and um for 3x3 three three, I got a 13 second solve which is not my best I've gotten 10 second solves before with like huge luck but um yeah a 27 solve had a PLL skip by the way yeah I did film it yikes okay we're back on board the Tasman Bridge, ready for day two of Turnaround Tassie. I, I still don't get the point.
point of this bridge? I don't get why they have to make this at 110 zone. If this highway is just like, it's not even that big, you're just driving at 110 for like, you know, 10 kilometers and then you have to slow it back down to like 80. So the second day of the competition was really not that much different from the first. I start off with pyramids, which a decent first time, a very decent second time, a decent third time, and also a very decent fourth solve. And at this point, I thought to myself, I can probably get into the finals if my last time is really good. But then I got a 19 second solve and I ruined my average. Although my average was sub 15 below my goal. So now a goal pass by the way. But as it turns out, I would have needed an 11.09 average to get into finals anyway. So <laughs> not so decent after all. Then it was skewed and our uh, first solve was good. Our uh, second solve was not that good, but it doesn't really matter as long as I don't get any more bad times. I'm still all right and we still hit my goal. And I did exactly that for my third solve, which was Ooh! fastest solve. That was not a 2x2 two two solve that I've recorded in the whole world competition. So it was pretty good. And then I got a 25 seconds. Yeah, when I was saying I was gonna get yeah. final, that's yeah, not happening that's anymore. That's, that's, that's not happening fine. anymore. So I had one last chance to redeem myself. If I can get 12.06 for this last solve, I would be able to hit my goal of sub 15. But as you can see here, my first layer solution wasn't that elegant. Quite a bit of pauses solving all out. And then a nightmare doing standard permutation. And then the corner fell off. Is that uh, DNF? I'm, I'm sure. gonna ask someone. You have to ask. I think it is. Yeah. Ethan? Yeah. I didn't see if it was solved or not before you dropped it. Yeah, that would be DNF. Oh, no. Alright. <laughs> It was a bad time anyway. I don't know what's up with my luck, but <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's stuff happens. So after a whole bunch of unlucky events occurring in Skew, it was time again for my favorite event, 3x3. The first solve wasn't very good. Pretty horrible last two slots for F2O with quite a bit of pauses. And then the fumble while doing PLL. 19.67 Second solve was also pretty horrible the Freaking U-perm with M moves causing a plus 2 on the solve But then the last 3 solves were all pretty good With a 15.24, 16.83 and a 15.83 All sub 17 which is pretty good So yeah, pretty happy with the average here which is 17.31 But unfortunately I did not reach my sub 15 goal And with a 17 average, surely I wouldn't have advanced to the final round. Then came the second round of 2x2 two two, and uh, <laughs> I don't really know how to describe this round. I mean, all of these solves were so lucky. Just for a bit of context, I averaged around 7 to 8 seconds on this event, but uh, <laughs> you'll see. So for this first 2x2 two two solve, 5.02. And then, I mean, my second solve was not as good, but still, below my average. Third solve as well was really easy. You have no idea how lucky I've been getting. And then there was a fourth solve. I'll just let you watch it. Yeah, 2.93 and then, I mean my reaction was pretty strong, but uh, look at the people around me. If any of you guys are watching this, I, I sincerely apologize for the fact that I probably scared the crap out of you. But after that PBL skip, I, I just qu I couldn't contain myself, so yeah, I sincerely apologize. And then that laugh solve, it's also pretty lucky. So after all that, my average was 5.55, which... I mean, you'd think that with insane luck like that, I would get into the finals, but unfortunately, I was two ranks off. And that's probably due to the fact that everyone else did well because of the scrambles, so nothing really even special to see here. Like, legit, 
four of the five scrambles had a three move face and then the other one had a four move face. It was a pretty good round, so everyone did pretty well. If I got my 5.55 average on my first round though, I mean, that, I would have gotten the top 12, but unfortunately I got a 9.20 average, so 20 second. So then it was four by four time. The first solve was pretty good, another 108. The second solve was also pretty good. Uh, a 107, in fact, was my second best film solve ever. Then it all went downhill from there, as the next two solves, I only got a 114 and a 119. I mean, not that much downhill, because I still did pretty good, but you know, I was aiming for a 110. So these solves meant that it was no longer possible to achieve my sub 110 goal in this competition. Now the last solve was the fattest DNF I've ever gotten in my exactly. life. I... Because what I did was I just lifted it up for a little bit. And then I accidentally pulled it back, pulled it back down. I wasn't even ready. Yeah. What happened? So, um, I, um, when I was placing my hand down, I accidentally lifted one hand up and then I pulled it back down and I got like a 0 0.17 time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I, I don't know, I, like, it, it was just done out of pure instinct. I don't even know why. Then, it was time for the two events that I've recently just learned. Megaminx and Square One. I did not have high expectations for them at all, so my aim was pretty low. If I just completed both my solves, I would have reached my goal. So, first up, Megaminx. I completed my first solve with a pretty good 347 time, and I completely smashed my second solve. 307. I mean, I still didn't get to do three solves, but having just unboxed my Megaminx 10 days ago, that was a really great achievement for me. So, just getting a 307 solve was... It was great! Then it was square one. I aimed slightly higher for square one than Mega Minx, and because of that, I didn't really hit my goal for square one. Which is actually a bit of a shame, unfortunately, as both of my times were over a minute long. My first solve was almost a DNF, since I spent a whole minute just making it into a cube shape. I don't know why I spent a whole minute, but, you know, I was new to square one, so who can you blame? So my final time was 1.48. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything here, that was a horrible time, even by someone who only learned it 10 days ago. By the way, my GoPro ran out barrier on my second solve, which was one minute, so yeah, I didn't get to do three solves. Now at this point, I was done with all my events. The remaining events were all finals, and I didn't make it into any finals, so I couldn't do any of them. Right? Wrong. Because for 3x3 three three second round, having came 17th place, only the top 12 get to participate in the finals, but five people left the competition early, which means I get to take part in the finals. Unfortunately though, nothing much happened in this final 3x3 three three round. I didn't really get many good times. My first solve was an 18 second solve, followed by a barely sub 15 solve, then a 21.30, my worst 3x3 three three time in the whole competition, an 18.57, which I didn't record, and a 16.41. So, all in all, it was a pretty crappy final round, but <laughs> as I was not even close to be able to participate in a 3x3 final, pretty happy with that. So, yeah, 17.66 average, and actually didn't come last. So, that wraps it up for the Turnaround Tassie 2020. It has been a fantastic first comp for me, and uh, it's time to head back to the hotel. Guys, so um, the cubing competition has finished now. So um, we got our results and everything. You know, it's all uploaded on WCA Live. Every results, everything. Uh, it's not yet uploaded to the WCA like actual like profile. So like, I don't have a profile yet. And those who had a profile, their profiles with the new times have not been updated yet. So um, that that still has to wait. But other than that, I'll just give a review of you know how well I did for each event. So for three by three, I got about like a 17 average for all three of my rounds, which the third one, I actually got like so dodgily because I was ranked 17th and only like the top 12 people get on. But like five people who are faster than me just completely just left. 
<laughs> so that's why I was able to get a final spot. You know, the delegates were really nice to, you know, give this opportunity to me to, um, you know, get in the final round in my first competition. I don't even know. But other than that, I didn't hit my goal. But, um, you know, I've hit my happy score. And, you know, I got into a final. So, you know what? I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm all right. Uh, for 2x2, two two, my goal was to get a sub-7 average. I, um, I think after, like, what happened, I think 2x2 two two has to be my one of my favorite events now. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, for 4x4, four four, my aim was to get a sub-110 average. Uh, unfortunately, that did not happen, but I did reach my happy score. For 5x5, five five, I completed my goal, but that wasn't really that much of a goal. Like, a sub-230, like... Average for 505 is really not that hard to get, so I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I did get the chance to get five solves, and you know, I did you know get a pretty good time on that, but you know, for three by three one handed, my aim was to get a sub 40 second average. Ah, oh, no, that I didn't make the second round. I mean, to get the second round, you need to be like in the top 75 percent, which I was one spot off. Oh, and and the sad thing is, right? Someone who was faster than me, who made it into one hand, didn't do the event, but uh, it left me out. So you know, unlike in the finals, I wasn't caught up. But you know what? That's completely fine. I would much rather get an extra round for three by three, like with two hands, than for you know just with one hand. So you know, that's completely fine. Ah, uh, for Mega Minx, my goal was you know complete both of my solves. I absolutely smashed that. You know, one of my solves I even got a three minute solve. But um, it's, it's, it's not that. It's not that. Once again, I feel like that goal is not that great. I mean, I did only start learning Mega Minx like two weeks ago, but a random nine year old had a chance of getting five solves. So um. I, I think I did pretty bad. Period Minx and Scoob, let's not talk about that. And finally, square one. Oh, I, I wanted to, you know, get five souls, but uh, I don't think I'm just quite there yet. I mean, I, I, I only started learning square one like two weeks ago too. And, you know, it's a pretty hard event. Like, it's so much different from like all of the other events. Like, if you learn like three by three and then you move on to like Mega Minx, it's not, it's a big difference. I mean, like, you can't really use that much of what you learn in 3x3 three three to put it into, you know, square one other than, you know, the concept of swapping pieces, you know, putting pieces like this, you know, have to solve this first and solve that. The concept of algorithms and, you know, finger tricks. But other than that, it's like a whole complete different concept for square one. So, um, I'm actually kind of happy. At least I didn't DNF any of the solves for square one. So, um, yeah. I'm back at the hotel now and, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna meet Phil for one last time because, you know, he agreed to it. And then I'm gonna head back to Sydney. And the trip back there is gonna be the last section of this four-part vlog. But other than that, that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, I know there wasn't really, you know, that much actual vlogging, you know, showing all the stuff. But, um, I, I tend to get, like, shy when filming in public. So, um, I apologize for all that if you want to like you know me talking more but at least i filmed all of myself so yeah that that's that if you have enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button let's see if we can get to uh 13 likes uh of course subscribe to this channel if you haven't already but uh, yeah other than that that's really all i have to say for this video i mean it's not that interesting but other than that i'll see you guys all in my next video goodbye